Hey everybody, this is Shocking Ace 1000 and we're playing for duty, welcoming you back to another episode of Pokemon Coliseum. Last time we dealt with an annoying scientist set the alarm off for this lab, letting everybody know that the intruders have not been dealt with. And you know what his line said? You know what he said when he set the alarm off? He said we can't escape the lab. Well, newsflash. I went back to Fenax City and I healed up my Pokemon off camera. Plus, I went to the outskirts stand and I bought more Pokeballs, Timer Balls, Great Balls and Ultra Balls. And also I bought Net Balls. Because we actually not, I've not actually shown them in a battle yet. And plus we probably might need them soon. We might. I'm not saying we will. We might. But yeah. He said we can't escape the lab. If we can't escape the lab, how come we actually went out and bought more Pokeballs? Hmm? Yeah. So, yeah, anyway. That's what we had to deal with in the last episode. And in this episode... Uh, you actually recall that we saw a door that was guarded by a Cypher Peon, which is this door over here. Do you remember those DNA... Oh, hello! We can see Scrub in the distance over there! I guess we got... Actually, wait, is it Scrub? I don't know now. But yeah, those DNA samples, they're used to release the lock. You have to type in exactly what you saw in the um, DNA sample. So we saw Shudawano, Quilava, and Croconaw. And remember, you can only see those DNA samples once. Once you've seen them, and, well, you escape the screen, and you forgot what Pokemon it is, then you're going to be in a heap of trouble. Anyway. Oh yeah, it is Scrub! Not once, not twice, but three times we meet! Do you recall who I am? I shall avenge my humiliation at the Relic Forest. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, mate, but I'm gonna be scrubbing the floor with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is an important battle here. We got Scrub use using a Graveler. He's a rock ground, so I can carry either rock head or sturdy for the ability. And I'm not going to mention what moves he has because obviously I don't really know. He also has a Clam Pearl, which is a plain water type. I believe it can have, it can have Shell Armor for the ability, which protects, protects him from critical hits, I reckon. So I'm going to run out the back, use Rain Death and Psybeam. Okay, there we go. They did a decent amount of damage to Clam Pearl. And that Rain Dance is mainly for that Graveler. Right, that's the most common thing that Clam Pearl will be using. Iron Defense. And Magnitude. That can actually vary depending on the number of 1 to 10. If it's 10, it'll do a massive amount of damage. But if it's any... Okay. <laughs> If there's any less, then he won't do much damage. But he knocked out his own teammate for us. Uh, oh no, oh no. Wobbuffet. Now, Wobbuffet is one of the particular Pokemon I often tend to forget what his type is. Because, judging from his design, I keep thinking he's a water psychic type, but he's actually just a plain psychic. Which is not good. You gotta be careful with Wobbuffet because it can carry. Both Mirror Coat, which is a counter attacking move for special attacks, and Counter, which is a counter attacking move based on physical attacks. You can carry both of them. And you've got to make sure that you do not get hit by one of them. It can also carry Shadow Tag for the ability, which is not pleasant because it prevents you from switching your Pokemon out. Okay, Gravel is down, so he carried Rockhead for the ability. Right, let's see. 
What's he gonna do? He's gonna bring out Medicham. He's using Miracle. Yeah. I highly predicted that he was gonna do that. So, let's bring out Prosciutto. I know it's a risky move because we got a fight inside one of the field. But, yeah. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use Rock Slide and Return on Wobbuffet and hopefully to knock him out. I highly predict that he's gonna use Okay, I, as I was saying, I highly predict he's going to use the move counter. Unless I flinch him. Yeah, he used counter. Going to be ganging attacking on Prosciutto. Uh, okay, let's bring out Kipora. Fly on Medicham, return on Wapafet. I highly believe he's going to use. Oh, never mind. He got knocked out. Did he? Oh, no, he didn't. And of course, your Medicham is faster than Kapora. Oh, God. Oh. If you see a Pokemon do that move, by all means, do not attack it. Because Destiny Bond. Only use that move if you know your Pokemon is about to get knocked out. And what if it's actually hitting on sitting on one health? When clearly his health looks like he's got no health. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to spare a time to use one of my lemonades to heal up Kepora. Okay, so Fly gonna go on Medicham. Medicham obviously survived. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on, that, that makes no sense. When I had the Pokemon with Destiny Bond, I used it once, it activated. And when I used it twice in a row, it said it failed. How come he used it twice in a row and it succeeded? How come? Yeah, that secret power is going to go for Espeon. But that makes no sense. How on earth was he able to use two Destiny Bonds in a row? Does Destiny Bond work just like Protect and Detect? So I have no idea. See? Three times in a row! Okay, seriously, that is just super dickish. Let me guess, is he going to use it four times in a row? I highly guess he is. Yeah! Four times in a motherfucking row. Five! Five! Are you serious? Seriously! I use Destiny Bond two turns in a row, it fails. You use it five times in a row and it succeeds. At least you have some PP on that move now. But I'm still not going to attack him because his Destiny Bond is still in effect. But still. 
That's just like a repeat of that Metatide Detect strategy that Sugar Conway dealt with, where a Pokemon protected with Detect five times in a row. And it was delaying time. Right. So once again, I have to heal up my Pokemon. Ugh. And it's annoying really because the next battle after that one is a really important one. Ay, ay, ay. I know you lot really don't like me doing this and believe me, even I don't like doing it, but it's the only way for me to have a fully healed team for a really important battle that is scheduled to be coming up very soon. <sighs> I think we've only got one battle left after this until we're done in this lab. I think. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to use a PC, I'm going straight back to Fenac City. I'm actually not really too sure in particular, but I think if you fail to snag Hitmontop from Scrub in the Relic Forest, you would have a second chance to grab it um, in that battle. I think. I could be wrong, but I highly predict it. Okay, we have our Pokemon healed up. And now we'll head back to the lab, and holy cow, your feet are huge! Holy cow, your feet are huge! Yeah, believe me, they these characters' feet are absolutely huge, even Ruby's are. Yeah, because somebody actually did a montage of Trigger Connor in this game, consecutively saying, Holy crap, your feet are huge! And they actually made a montage of it. Uh, my parents have arrived back, so I'm going to have to call it an end to this episode, guys. I'm so sorry. But I'll see you guys next time.